we are looking at stromatolites. So stromatolites are structures preserved in a rock. So you find lamina, which could be flat or look like domes or look like uh, tents. And what is important is that stromatolites have been assumed or interpreted most of the time to be of microbial origin. So stromatolites are the fossilized cyanobacteria, and they have been around for billions of years. So this is relatively new, but it's still nothing has changed very much through time. And what we are trying actually to find is, because we're looking at crystals, that's what's left, we're trying to see if those crystals were actually precipitated by bacteria or if they were just precipitated from the water column without any contribution from microbes. Okay, the very important thing is that like in many stromatolites in the past, uh, so um, you know, five, 500 million years ago, at the time of the Snowball Earth, for example, lo, uh, most stromatolites consist of a mineral called dolomite. And this mineral has been a puzzle for over 200 years. It should not form at Earth's surface, but the geologic record is full of dolomite. So people started quarreling. It's really a big debate. People said, well, it wasn't formed primarily as dolomite. It was formed as another carbonate mineral because dolomite is the carbonate of calcium and magnesium. It was formed as a calcite, maybe. And then, only after a certain time, through a process that is called diagenesis, which is anything that happens after the deposition, at the sediment surface, only after it became dolomite. What we are finding are nanocrystals, meaning crystals there are, which are only a few nanometers in diameter. In a rock that is over 200 million years old, which it would seem impossible. It would seem like, how can I form and preserve a nanocrystal? It's still there. It means that it has not been subjected to diagenesis. So we are looking at evidence of primary dolomite. Now, how do we get the primary dolomite? This is the conundrum. We might get it because we had bacteria, or we might get it because we have some organic compounds, or we might get it because the environment was so extreme that by a combination of evaporation, pH, and other things, we combine already nanocrystals. So we form nanocrystals in the water. The importance of that to astrobiology is that if we find the stromatolites of something which look like stromatolites on Mars, and we know that stromatolites are associated in the snowball earth to dolomite, and they could be primary, but we cannot give it for granted that these stromatolites are cyanobacteria. So we want to investigate with a powerful microscope to find if we have some evidence of a biological component, such as the most important, or most usually is presence of filaments or presence of tiny globular structures. And that's the reason why we are going at the nanoscale to look at our dolomite. The importance is what are stromatolites? Because if we find stromatolites on Mars, what are they telling us? Is that life or is that an inorganic?
precipitate. And that's crucial for our astrobiological implications. We don't know. We, that's exactly what we are trying to find. The, we debate by looking at the images about, okay, is this an artifact or is this really the evidence of filaments? Because you, if you look, they have sort of an organization. And it's not what you expect from the breaking up of crystals. It's something that we seem to have some dark matter, which might have been some organics, and the crystals are sort of attached to it, and they seem to form these curved shapes. So it's really intriguing. I mean, it's the very first time I've never seen anything like that. And the interpretation could be that possibly these uh, mats of mud were lyred might have been stromatolites, real stromatolites with cyanobacteria in them. Well, in this case, I'm not sure because this is a very tough rock, but if you have the possibility to extract organic molecules, and it's been done in sediments which are a little bit softer than this one, but still very old, then you might actually find um, organic compounds which can be traced to cyanobacteria. You find also like extra polymeric substances. Uh, what we do when we have a rock like this one, well, people use a, rare, uh, a chemical fingerprint. So you use uh, rare earth elements plus yttrium. And there is a whole body of literature telling you that if you find these elements over what is the expected concentration, then it is a signal of what people call microbialites, meaning mm, bodies of rocks consisting of microbes. Organic signature? No. The problem is that you can create organic molecules for, with a totally inorganic uh, process. I mean, it's just carbon, hydrogen, you touch those together. When you hunt for life in, in the geologic record, I think that the best is to find the microstructures which are directly referable to what you see today, for example, in cyanobacterial nuts. And this is why people look for filaments at the microscope or for small globules or whatever looks like a bug. And the other thing is to extract uh, organic molecules which are clearly the product of breakdown of microbes not just organic molecules. For example, in, in another Triassic sediment, I found what are called like uh, humic and fulvic substances, but these come from the soil. And they travel into a shallow sea just because they are transported from rivers. And, and those are not cyanobacteria. They are just organic molecules. <laughs> So it is a very difficult, it's a very difficult task. And one, actually one of the best things you can do is to look with the optical microscope. So in fact, before coming to the electron microscope, I look at these at, the op, at a simple optical microscope and you look at the structure. So if the structure show you that your parallel laminae have all these little peloidal structure and they are all arranged in a certain way which is the same way you, exp you see when you look at a modern microbialite, then you can say, okay, I'm sure these were organisms. Huh?
Okay, this is a pile of mud. So it's, this is <laughs> this sample comes from a mountain which is over two thousand meters high in certain places, and it's all the same pile of mud. So there is mud which is just inorganic. It's not associated to anything. You can be a hundred percent sure that that you had bacteria around, but there is mud which is associated with these structures which might be flat or a little bit wrinkled. And, and if you look at those in detail, you can even find the filaments. And once you do that, you go like, okay, now I can claim or hypothesize with robustness that this was a stromatolite. If you don't, the scientific method tells you that you have to be cautious. You cannot claim, oh, from just one force, I have a stromansonite, I have cyanobacteria. You always have to look at different hypotheses, discard those or the hypotheses that do not hold, and take the hypotheses that are the most reasonable for what you're looking at. The image uh, is quite different from other artifacts we've seen under the electron microscope before. Uh, compared to the artifacts, this is more orientated, more like a pre-assembled structure yes. to me. And uh, refer to bacteria, I suspect that this type of structure could be the remains yeah. of a early stage cell wall from ancient algae or something. Having said that, just to tell you how strong the um, passion about this debate is, some people would tell you, oh, absolutely fantastic, you found nanocrystal associated with cyanobacteria, so now we have solved this problem, and we can go a little bit you know, farther and try to form dolomites again, and God knows maybe we can also help to sequester some more carbon dioxide again in the shallow ocean, who knows. But some other people would tell you, no, this doesn't stand a chance. It's all inorganic. You cannot claim that those are bacteria. You, the only thing that you can claim is that you see nanocrystal. And in reality, this is what we see. So the big discovery here would be just the presence of the nanocrystals because we are documenting dolomite formed as nanocrystals, so it's primary mud consisting of a mineral that shouldn't form. It's as simple as that. And the reason why people put the bugs in the equation is because if we cannot form the mineral, we have to, the, the, you can form the mineral if you rise the temperature. But you have to have a temperature of 60 degrees or over 60 degrees. So how can you have dolomite in the snowball earth or uh, when the temperature was cold? How can you have dolomite even in lakes where the temperature is 20 degrees? So that's the conundrum. That's why you put the bugs. The bugs provide the energy. The bugs provide you know, they, they catalyze the crystal. If I can do it inorganically, wow, I still don't know how. <laughs>